I didn't even see you guys there. You guys caught me in the middle of a set. Listen, guys, I get this a lot. Is creatine good or bad for diet? Ah, smashed on my, my fucking wrist. Is creatine good or bad for diabetes? We're gonna jump into this one, guys. We're gonna break things down. I got your back. Stick with me. Stick with me. Stick with me. One more. One more. Ooh, it's showtime, baby. What the fuck is creatine anyway? Creatine is an amino acid that is contained in your body's muscle cells mainly. Your kidneys can produce it, your liver can also produce it. So now you've got creatine that's in your muscle cells and creatine is amazing for helping out energy conversions in your body. When you think about it, when you guys are working out, when you eat something like carbohydrates or you're eating fats, uh, even oxygen itself can create ATP in your body's cells, specifically in the mitochondria in your cell. It's gonna take glucose, gonna take fatty acids and convert that into ATP. ATP or energy for your body so that you guys can get in the gym and just crush your workout, man. Without ATP, nothing is possible, I promise you that. ATP is made up of a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, meaning you've got adenosine and three phosphate atoms that are attached to the adenosine. Now what ends up happening is when you're working out and you're training, your body shoots off a phosphate atom, and as it shoots off that phosphate atom, you create fucking energy, baby, let's go. The molecule you're left with is called ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, or two phosphates attached to adenosine. I'm just geeking out on you guys, it is what it is. But now what happens is you've got creatine in your muscle cells. Now creatine is gonna go in because it wants you to keep going, it wants the energy. Creatine is almost like your body's pre-workout. What it's gonna do now, it's gonna attach itself to the phosphate atom that got shot off, and it's gonna carry another phosphate atom back to the cell, attach itself to ADP, and create ATP again. So now you see how that energy conversion just keeps happening over and over again to give you energy. Now here's the thing, the more muscle that you have on board, the more creatine your body is going to make. So the issue happens when, you, when your doctor runs a test, right? Now the test your doctor's gonna run, it's gonna look for creatinine in your body's blood. Now you have to think, again, the creatinine that you're looking for in the body's blood, if there's too much creatinine in the, in the, in the blood, and remember, when you're breaking down protein, that can also leave behind creatinine. If your body's kidneys flush out creatinine, but we know that the more muscle you have on board, the more creatinine you're naturally gonna have, but your doctor goes and runs a creatinine test to test how well your, your kidneys are functioning, and then they see that you have higher creatinine levels because you're on a creatine supplement and you're building muscle, then what that's gonna mean is that your doctor might not be taking into account the increased muscle mass that you have as a result of you working out. Now, if you're taking creatine and you're working out, now you have an increased capacity for the creatine that you have in your body. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just if your doctor is unaware of the blood test and how building muscle interacts with an increased amount of creatinine in your body, then they, it can be mistaken for a kidney that's not functioning right. And normal levels of creatinine are more of a result of somebody who is, has not trained, who, who's not regularly training, who is not building muscle. Your average citizen who's not going to the gym most likely like you do. So the numbers are gonna be completely different. Your normal might not be their normal based on what their body can do. So it's important to understand what the kidneys do and how they flush out creatinine, but also how your body creates more creatinine simply because your body has more muscle on board. You have the added mix of more creatine, more muscle mass, and more creatinine in the blood, which is natural, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as your kidneys are flushing it out of your system. Here's where the problem kicks in. If you have pre-existing kidney conditions or issues, because now we know what the kidneys do to flush creatinine out of the body's blood, now if you have those pre-existing kidney conditions or issues, and it might be harder for you to do what you have to do when it comes to controlling those levels, and for somebody like that, they should probably stay away from creatine just because their kidneys have to repair themselves first, if that makes sense. One thing that we notice too, especially when it comes to type one diabetics, is if you notice that randomly you start taking creatine and your blood sugar starts going high and through the roof for no reason, you're not sure why, it could be the creatine that you're on. So keep an eye out for that. The most important thing that you guys can remember is how is your body 
responding to creatine, right? It doesn't matter what the, what the studies say or what I tell you. Understand your own body and recognize when things are a little bit different so that you guys can make those adjustments and those tweaks based on what's happened to you personally, right? Because everybody's body is different. But one of the things that I have seen is some type one diabetics that it happens to, which is a small percentage, but they notice that their blood sugars are all over the place. If that's the case, come off the creatine monohydrate, try maybe a creatine HCL because you don't need as much of that in your body system, about three grams a day versus five grams a day for creatine monohydrate. Now, see if that makes a difference. If that doesn't make a difference, if that, that doesn't help, try a brand called Creacolin. Creacolin is really good. I've known people that have been on creatine monohydrate and went to Creacolin, that brand, um, and it's more microdized creatine and it might get in the system a little bit better. Sometimes it's about finding what works for you, so try that as well. Go down the line and try those three things to see if that helps to regulate and bring the blood sugars back uh, in balance again. I'm gonna be blunt with you guys. Because the studies are so limited with type 1 diabetes, nobody 100% knows why some type 1 diabetics maybe have higher blood sugar readings. Now maybe it just it's making your body a little bit more insulin resistant for whatever reason, having the creatine in your system. Uh, maybe the body itself is producing more cortisol, a stress response to more creatinine in the system which causes your body uh, maybe to, 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 to increase insulin resistance. But try different things if you notice that's happening with you. Don't ignore what's happening to you specifically and tweak it and try those little adjustments I said and see if that helps uh, to control those blood Blood sugars a little bit more for you as well and when it comes to type 2 diabetes again it doesn't matter whether you're a type 1 or you're a type 2 diabetic the most important thing that you can know is how are your kidneys functioning remember to get your overall health in check get those blood sugars in a1c down as much as you can into normal ranges allow your body to function as good as it can and that should help you for the bigger picture right but always listen to yourself always listen to your own body and you guys should have nothing to worry about when it comes to creatine all right definitely something to try it can help you to improve your strength your muscle mass how much you push uh, energy levels overall. So these are amazing things. It's probably the most powerful supplement you can use to help you get gains in the gym, in my own opinion. 